Hi, this will be the second video of showing limits by definition. The, at the previous example, I gave more insights about this. Uh, what, what is this epsilon definition and what are we doing actually? So I won't go into details for this video. You can go check that one off. So I need to show this limit. So um, this is my an, my sequence, okay? And this is my limit. L that I want to show. So I'm doing, so I say let epsilon. So I'm given already an epsilon, positive epsilon from the definition, okay? And now I will do, I will try to look for an n such that this a n minus L will be less than epsilon. So I'm writing a n minus L, which is 2n plus 1 over 3n minus 1 minus 2 over 3. So now if I just multiply this part by 3, this part by 3n minus 1, I will have uh, 3 times 6n plus 3 minus 6n. Uh, this will be minus, minus, minus 2, which is plus 2, over uh, 3 times 3n minus 1 which is 9n minus 3, okay? This is just algebra. So I can just simplify stuff and say this is equal to 5 over 9n minus 3. So since n is uh, at least 1 and is greater or equal than 1, uh, I'm just going to remove, remove this uh, absolute value, okay? So now... Uh, like at the previous video, I will try to show this is less than 1 over something, okay? Uh, preferably with something less than n, okay? Uh, so now let, let's see what can I do. So I can just leave this part alone. I can't do much about that. So let's see if we can simplify some stuff, okay? If I make this 3 into 9, this thing will be smaller. So if I take uh, one over reciprocal, if I take reciprocal of that, it will be bigger. So I can just write nine and minus nine, nine here. Here, what I did, did was was I said nine and minus nine is less than nine and minus three. So if I write both sides one over that thing, it will be the reverse. Okay. And I can say this is equal to five over nine times n minus 1, okay? Here I can directly find, try to find this n, but let, let's do one more step. So I know that 5 over 9 is less than 1, so I can just write 1 instead of 5 over 9, okay? 1 over n minus 1, which is 1 over n minus 1, okay? And I can also now so I know from the definition that this small n is greater or equal than this capital N. So n minus 1 is greater or equal than this capital N minus 1. And if I take 1 over, this will be less or equal than 1 over capital N minus 1. Okay. So now I'm just continuing and I'm saying this is less or equal than 1 over capital N minus 1. So now I started with a n minus l, I have e equal equal. I have somewhere small, so I can just, uh, well, it doesn't matter. It could all be equal. And in the end, if I use just one ep less than epsilon, I will be done with this part, okay? I have a n minus l is less than epsilon. But let's see if we can find the n, this capital N. We will try to find this n in terms of, uh, n is actually a function of epsilon, okay? So I have that 1 over, uh, so I'm just using this part, 1 over n minus 1 is less than epsilon. If I just flip them, it will be that 1 over epsilon. Let me write it uh, with other way, okay? So I'm just saying n minus 1 is greater than 1 over epsilon. So I will have n is greater than 1 plus 1 over epsilon. So now, uh, 
I I already have my n almost. So if I set this n being equal to one plus one over epsilon, uh, it will be kind of done. But uh, one over as as like in the previous example, one of one over epsilon may not be an integer. So if I just take floor function of that and add another one here, which will be two plus one over n, I will be done. Technically, like for the last part, you can be as creative as you want. Uh, there are infinitely many such n's and you can just find a different one from different way. But uh, the thing is that if you found that this n should be positive, okay, this is the first point and it should be an integer and it should just satisfy this a n minus l is less than epsilon condition. So that's the end of it. Oops, sorry. So yeah, that's all.